Today, I'm going to teach you the exact amount of fiber you need to eat to not only lower your blood sugar, but actually reverse insulin resistance, the root of high blood sugar levels. And I'm going to walk you through the best sources of fiber and the exact amounts to elicit positive results. The exact same protocols used in real randomized controlled trials that lower A1C, fasting glucose, post-meal spikes, cholesterol, and triglycerides. Not all fiber works the same. Not all doses work the same, and most people are eating far below the therapeutic range. So by the end of this video, you're going to know exactly how many grams you need per day, why fiber is one of the most powerful tools for blood sugar control, and the exact meals that thousands of people that I've personally helped have used to transform their blood work. Let's dive in. People think of fiber as good for digestion, but when you look at the research I'm about to show you, fiber stops being a digestive nutrient and becomes a true metabolic intervention that has the power to reverse the root of many high blood sugar problems. For example, a huge systematic review published in PLOS Medicine analyzed 42 randomized control trials. This is decades worth of nutrition science across prediabetes, type 2 diabetes, metabolic syndrome, obesity, cardiovascular disease. Here is what they found when people increased their total fiber intake to around 35 grams per day. Fasting glucose dropped, A1C improved, insulin resistance improved, which was measured by HOMA IR, cholesterol and triglycerides improved, inflammation markers dropped, and across the studies, people had a significantly lower risk of dying from any cause. Think about that for a moment. All of that just by eating 35 grams of fiber per day, a nutrient we barely talk about in the right amount. It improves blood sugar, insulin resistance, lipids, inflammation, and even mortality. And these studies weren't using supplements. They were using real foods. And I will show you the exact foods that will take you to 35 grams of fiber per day later in this video. But in the meantime, comment guide below and I'll send you our free meal plans that I personally built focusing on fiber for the reversal of insulin resistance. There are two types of fiber, soluble and insoluble. This next study zooms into soluble fiber, specifically the gel-forming fibers found in oats, beans, lentils, chia, flax, and many fruits and vegetables. This meta-analysis looked at 22 randomized control trials, and the findings were stunning. Consuming 7 to 12 grams of soluble fiber per day, not total fiber, just soluble, significantly improved fasting glucose, fasting insulin, and HOMA IR. So what makes these results so important? Well, this tells us something crucial. The metabolic improvements weren't driven by weight loss at all. They were driven by fiber directly altering core physiological pathways. It slows digestion. It physically blunts glucose absorption. It changes gut hormones. It feeds bacteria that makes short-chain fatty acids to improve insulin sensitivity. I'm not making this up. This is cold hard science across 22 different trials showing the same results from consuming just 7 to 12 grams of soluble fiber per day. Again, if you don't know how to get soluble fiber in your diet, don't guess. Just download our free guide that will contain three different meal plans to choose from. So just comment guide below and we'll send that to you for free. Now there's a specific fiber supplement that can help you meet your fiber goals. And there is science to back it up. In this 2024 meta-analysis of 19 randomized control trials, researchers found that a type of fiber known as psyllium had significant positive effects on blood sugar control. Psyllium lowered fasting blood sugar by 7 milligrams per deciliter, A1C by 0.75%, and insulin resistance markers. And here's what shocked me. These improvements occurred even without diet changes, which means soluble fiber isn't lowering blood sugar because people ate less. It lowered blood sugar because it changed the biology of how glucose moves through the body. Viscous fiber slows gastric emptying, thickens the meal in the small intestine so glucose enters more gradually and allows the gut microbiome to ferment that fiber into something called short-chain fatty acids, which improve insulin sensitivity and reduce liver glucose production. Fiber also increases GLP-1 and PYY, two hormones that stabilize blood sugar and improve metabolic control. 
So no, fiber doesn't just add bulk. It interacts with your digestive system, your hormones, your microbiome, and your liver, making it genuinely therapeutic at the right dose. So to summarize, based on decades of research, here's the range where metabolic improvements consistently happen. 30 to 45 grams of total fiber per day, and 7 to 12 grams of soluble fiber per day. When you hit this range, the mechanisms activate slower glucose absorption, improved insulin sensitivity, lower liver fat, improved cholesterol, reduced inflammation, and you begin seeing improvements in fasting blood sugar, post-meal spikes, cravings, energy, satiety, and A1C your average blood sugar levels. The problem is that most people eat 12 to 15 grams per day. That's not even half of the therapeutic dose. So let's change that. Let me show you how easy it is to hit 35 to 40 grams of fiber. Let's build an entire day of eating that reaches the therapeutic range without feeling like you're eating like a rabbit. <laughs> Breakfast is the easiest place to front load fiber. So here are examples that you can eat. Number one, an oatmeal power bowl. This will give you around 16 grams of fiber. Half a cup of rolled oats is about four grams. A tablespoon of chia seeds is five grams. A tablespoon of flaxseed, three grams. And then half a cup of berries is about four grams. Avocado chickpea toast will get you 14 grams. Two slices of sprouted green bread is about eight grams. Half an avocado is about five grams. Sprinkle some hemp seeds for an additional one gram boost. Number three, a yogurt fiber bowl can get you anywhere between 13 and 15 grams of fiber. You add some plain Greek yogurt with half a cup of berries, which is about four grams. A tablespoon of chia seeds is about five grams. And a tablespoon of flax seeds is about three grams. Now let's talk about some high fiber lunches, which you can get anywhere between 12 to 18 grams. Lunches where soluble fiber can really shine. So number one, a lentils and green bowl can get you about 17 grams of fiber. This can include a cup of cooked lentils, which is about 15 grams, and some leafy greens, which is about two grams. You could also try something like a chickpea salad. This will get you about 13 to 14 grams. One cup of chickpeas is going to get you 12 grams of fiber, and then greens and veggies will give you an additional two grams. Third option is a black bean burrito bowl, which can get you about 16 grams of fiber. So three quarter cup of black beans will get you 11 grams and then veggies and salsa can give you another five grams of fiber. Okay, now for some high fiber dinners. These can get you anywhere between 10 to 15 grams. You could try a veggie stir fry with edamame, which will get you around 12 grams. So you can mix some vegetables, which is about five grams with half a cup of shelled edamame, another four grams, and then half a cup of kidney beans, three grams. You could also try a black bean chili. One cup of black bean chili is going to provide about 15 grams of fiber. And then you can also try a salmon salad fiber boost can get you between 10 to 12 grams. The greens will give you three grams, half a cup of chickpeas, six grams, and then hemp seeds. You can sprinkle some on top for one gram. So a daily example of total fiber intake, breakfast will provide about 15 grams, lunch 16 grams, a snack, which could be apples and almonds, could give you another 6 grams, dinner 12 grams. So that's a total of 49 grams, which is right in the therapeutic zone used in clinical trials. And lastly, let me break down in plain English the four main reasons why fiber is going to become your next best friend. Number one, fiber slows glucose absorption. Soluble fiber forms a gel that delays the speed of digestion. This flattens your blood sugar curve. Number two, fiber feeds your gut microbiome. Fermentation produces short-chain fatty acids, which improve insulin sensitivity, reduce inflammation, and improve gut barrier integrity. Number three, fiber lowers liver glucose production. So high fiber diets reduce liver fat, which reduces fasting glucose. Number four, fiber improves cholesterol and triglycerides. Soluble fiber actually binds to something called bile acids and your liver has to use cholesterol to make more bile acids and this will drop your bad cholesterol. So now you know the therapeutic fiber dose, the best sources of fiber, the exact meals to hit 35 to 45 grams of fiber per day, and the mechanisms behind how fiber reverses insulin resistance. If you want more help hitting your fiber goals, comment guide below and I'll send you three free meal plans designed to keep your blood sugar stable and improve insulin sensitivity naturally. I'm dietitian Diana and I'll see you in the next video.